I'm Bob Bauman. I'm the founder of Edward Bauman Clothiers in Dallas, Texas. Clothes will take a man where he wants to go. You should dress for the position you want, not the position you have. If you want to be a millionaire, dress like a millionaire. You'll get there much faster. Clothes really do make the man. And people do judge people by their appearance. Whether you like it or not, they do it. Is it right? No. Um, I believe we're all created equal. But at the same time, people get promoted in their careers because they look the part. Well, I think people look at you differently. Um, you know, I've done this for 20 years now. And through the years, I've run into all kinds of clients, all different types of people. One of my clients owned a software company. And uh, their company was booming when the dot-coms were now, the dot-com was over, all the billion dollar companies were falling by the wayside. Well, he was knocking out of the park. And I said, what do you think's your secret? He says, it's simple, Bob. He says, every guy in my company has to wear a tie. He says, they don't have to wear a jacket, but they have to wear a tie. He says, so when we go out to bid on the next job, he says, the people walking out in front of us are all in khaki shorts and polo shirts. We all walk in in navy slacks, wider blue shirt, and ties. He says, they automatically think we're smarter. They automatically think we're better, we're more successful, we're better at our game than the people who walked out before us. When in reality, the people that were there before us, they may be better than we are but we give the appearance that we're better. And so that's why we always walk out with the order. I think men hate to shop, I know that. And I feel the reason they hate to shop is because you know, as men, we have big egos. You know, we like to be the very best at what we do. And so it's not too often I find a client that, you know, let's say he's an attorney, I just want to be any old attorney. No, he wants to be the best attorney he is. And so we have these big egos. When we walk in, they have no idea what they're doing. And so you go into some stores in town, a guy wants a pair of shoes. Well, there's one store here in town that's very popular. They're all across the country. Well, they have over 300 pairs of men's shoes. Well, a guy walks in, he has no idea where to start. Doesn't have a clue. And you got to realize, how many people in that shoe department have been working there for 10 years? How many people really know how to read a guy, understand his personality, and get the right shoe that fits him? Not fits his foot, that's number one important, but it has to fit his personality. And it's the same thing with the suit. You walk in, well the guy selling the suit two weeks ago, he may have worked in the ladies shoe department, and now he's working in the men's suit department. How is he qualified to make sure that the fit's right. I believe in any store, if a person comes to work for me, they cannot sell clothes to the customer until they've been here for six months to a year. They have to see it done over and over and over and understand how to read that personality, understand how to fit that garment, understand that the right length for the pants, despise what the customer wants, you know what's right, and you need to at least let him know what's right and deliver to him what's right. I don't, you know, one of my favorite um, quotes is from Stanley Marcus, and this is how I run my company, and he says, I don't believe in giving the customer what he wants. I believe the true merchant's responsibility is to give the customer what he, is to educate the customer on what he should want, why he should want it, and then deliver it to him. So the same thing with the guy with the pants are too long. I should educate him on why they're too long. I should make sure he understands that, and then I should start making his pants the right length, instead of allowing him to just walk around and everybody's laughing because his pants are dragging the ground. 